somehow the rules do not apply to you. Hi. Welcome back to the Key Parter interview series. I know this intro is a little bit different to what we normally do, but that doesn't change how good this episode is. Speaking of this episode, I get to sit down with arguably one of the best portrait artists I've ever seen. His name is David Meeling. He has a really interesting history behind his work and how he started. And I'm really looking forward to sitting down and talking to him. So David, how are you doing? Too bad, thank you very much. Yeah, first interview, isn't it? First one, yeah. Well, hopefully we can do something yeah, special with case. this one. <laughs> so what have you been up to recently with uh, the pandemic and everything going on? I've just been building my workout, really. Um, I, before the pandemic, I didn't really have much of a catalogue of work, mm. um, and I didn't have a focus on a theme. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, using the lockdown, I would just concentrate on building some work up so that I could have an exhibition in the future. Mm -hmm. So so going back to saying you're building up work at the moment, you started with pencils or pencil drawings and graphite. That's right, yeah. Um, I've had a look at some of your work and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's incredible the detail that yourself is producing, even in your earlier work. And so where did the pencil, work, where did you pick up a pencil and sort of start to develop as an artist really? Because you came to it a little bit later in life. I yeah, it's, it's always been a hobby. I've always sort of enjoyed um, art of every description, but when I was younger, I. It was literally just graphite pencil drawings, mm. um, mainly sort of film stars, things like that, and focusing on building up the detail. I like to try and get as much of a photorealism look as possible. So, mm. and literally, I was just building that skill up. But it was only a hobby, mm. ever a hobby, really, for years ago. I didn't have any confidence in myself at all to become a, a professional artist. Mm. So, so yeah, it was just a hobby for myself. I think a lot of artists, well, individuals can sort of relate to that, the confidence element of, you know, having the confidence to show, especially show your work. And exactly. sort of looking at your earlier pieces, I saw your portrait of, uh, I think it was Heath Ledger. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the detail in that work. And it was, that yeah, I think everybody <laughs> loves a bit of Heath Ledger though. Yeah. So it, obviously there's a bit of a raw talent there. If you sort of picked it up when you were a little bit younger and it's been a hobby for yourself, with that in mind, how's been developing as an artist? Because you started with pencil, as we said, but now you're doing a lot of oil painting. Where did that transition start? Because for a lot of people, that's quite a difficult one once you find your rhythm. Definitely. Yeah, I didn't think I'd have any skill whatsoever in painting. Mm. Um, I mean, building the colours, mixing them, mm. you know, applying them, I just didn't think I'd be able to do it. So. Um, I entered Sky Portrait Artist of the Year on the first series that mm. they done with a pencil drawing <laughs> and um, I didn't get through to the heats on that one so but after watching the show everybody was painting yeah so I thought to have any chance at all because at that, that stage I was literally taking it really seriously I wanted to do this professionally yeah. so um, so I thought I'd try you know I completely self-taught um, I didn't go to college or anything, but I, I've read a few books on, you know, what sort of process they do. Mm. Boris Bellagio was mm. one book, fantasy artist, absolutely amazing. Mm. And um, he uses liquid mixed with the oils and things like that. So I, oh, I literally read up on how he done his, mm. Mm. and I, I just gave it a go. I've done a couple of sort of like practice pieces and then I done a self portrait to enter for the following series. Mm. So and I done that and got through to the series. So <laughs> so yeah it was That's so awesome. That must have been quite sort of difficult for yourself entering Sky Arts. Was it quite a, a jumping point to sort of start putting your work out because I think for most artists sharing their work is always the scariest yeah, thing and definitely. you know especially putting it into a competition as large as obviously Sky Arts is now with the Portrait Artist mm -hmm. of the Year but especially that first series because there was so much uh, hype around it when I it didn't was really know what it was about okay <laughs> <laughs> I knew that you painted a celebrity sat there in four hours mm. and I thought well I'm not gonna be able to do that anyway so but you know it's a it's a 
something to go for as an experience and I did sort of see it a little bit as trying to build my confidence mm. so so yeah I wasn't sure what what it involved yeah of course so you entered the second series yeah. as well um, how did that all go because eventually you did get on yeah you did get into uh, the actual filming of the yeah. TV show so what was that like because I think for a lot of us the idea of being on uh, yeah. on camera, especially for a TV <laughs> show, one that's watched by lots of exactly. people, it's quite anxiety. Do you it, say? it was. I mean, when I entered it, I didn't really think about it. I didn't think I'd get through. Mm. It was one of my first oil paintings. So um, um, when I got the phone calls and I got through, I, I was like, what? <laughs> I just <laughs> couldn't believe it. So um, I did apply to it because they at that time they. They used various um, galleries and exhibition places and that all over Britain mm. and Wales and everything. So I applied to have my heat in, you could, you could take a pick out of five or six, and I chose Cardiff. Nice. And um, the lady on the phone said, oh, I got some good news, you're free and everything. And then I said, um, the bad news is, though, is your heat is in Edinburgh. And I thought, oh, oh no. you know, thanks like Cardiff, I've got to go all the way to Edinburgh. But yeah, it was, it was amazing, and I flew up and everything, but oh my god, I was so nervous on the day. Yeah, I could imagine. But the team were absolutely amazing, they, mm. they do really make you feel relaxed, and, but yeah, very nerve-wracking. Mm. Um, so a little bit of insight into it, because I've never been on a TV show, personally, I'm not sure many people have. So what was it like, the actual recording of the show? Because when we watch it as viewers, we only see, you know, what's That's edited right. in. Yeah. So what was it like being there painting in that environment? Was it quite chaotic or was it quite relaxing? It, it was relaxing-ish. Mm. <laughs> I mean, the pressure was on to get a, a decent painting in four hours. Mm. But yeah, it was, it was quite relaxing because you did have the whole day. Um, you've got four hours with the celebrity sat in front of you. Okay. So they come out, they sit down, but you do have an hour break in the middle where the celebrity sort of goes off and has a break. You can carry on painting through that time. So in a way, including other breaks and that, you could have six hours of painting if you mm. really wanted to. Not mm. sure if they still do that. I <laughs> better say that, just in case everyone's <laughs> applying it, it's not like that at all. But yeah, it's, it was quite relaxing, but the pressure was on you to mm. make a, a good painting. And literally every sort of like 20 minutes you get stopped. Yeah. For yeah. like a, a chat with one of the judges or, you know, the presenter. Mm. And yeah, you have a little bit of an interview and that. So, and then you've got to get back into your painting and wonder where you were. Where yeah, you were sort of catch up with the process yeah, that you were in. Exactly. So speaking of Sky Arts, out of that, you gained some commissions and did some commission work, I believe, from Sky yeah, Arts. Yeah, on, on the first show, I didn't get very much out of it, but the mm. portrait that I entered with, they did a book after. Oh, okay. um, on It was called The Little Book of Portraits, and it had uh, all the entries from, well, a selection of yeah. entries from the first and second series, and the one that I entered with was in that book. Mm. So that was really good. Again, helped with the confidence. So yeah. I thought, um, because of the experience and knowing how it worked, I thought I'd enter again the following mm -hmm. year, and mm. I did, and I got an again. <laughs> and that time I was shortlisted on the show, so that really did boost confidence. Mm. And it was from that show that I got, um, it was Michael Auger actually from Calabro. Oh, Scott yes, Thomas. yes. He was on tour when the series was on, he watched it when he came back and contacted me out of all of the artists <laughs> to paint his portrait. So all these little things has helped with confidence. And yeah, I could imagine, definitely. So yourself isn't working full time as an artist right now, but you're planning to. Which is good to hear. Well, yeah, yeah, everything crossed. <laughs> I think everybody who's an artist wants to work full time eventually. But so at the moment you're working in a call centre, yeah. and from that you've actually found people to paint. I believe like models yeah. to paint in a in a new series of of work, well older series of work That's as well. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I literally I was just painting random portraits of people, mm. and 
you know, I realised that's not really gonna sell. It, it would sell to the person you're painting, yeah, of maybe, course. but no one's really gonna want that on their wall. So I, I thought I need a theme really, and um, I thought about doing uh, some paintings based on film titles, like classic film mm, titles. Mm. Um, so yeah, I um, first one was The Wizard of Oz. Nice. Um, because I thought it'd be quirky, something a bit different, and. Yeah, four people that I worked with, I, I, I was looking at them thinking, oh, you, you could be the tin man. <laughs> yeah, so I asked them and yeah, they were up for it. We had a photo shoot and, mm. and I painted it and that was literally just before lockdown. Oh, okay. So that was the only one that I could do <laughs> with models of yeah. my own choosing. Because yeah. right. you took some time off work just before the lockdown yeah. hit. Um, six months, I believe, yeah. which is a nice break from work. That's right. I think all of us would like that. Literally at some point. to spend day after day painting. <laughs> painting. Yeah. And you're working on a new series now. Yeah. You're working on uh, a series about movie titles, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Uh, building up for a solo show. That's right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this series because it sounds really exciting. Looking at the work that you've been making, and the, the sheer detail that you're getting out of your your hands and the paint. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about this series. So yeah, I, um, it, it's just got better and better actually as, I, as I've been going through. Because of lockdown, it's been, I can't have my own photo shoot, so I've literally been scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every single photographer on Instagram mm -hmm. to try and find something that I could think, yeah, that would be really good as, you know, Snow White, mm -hmm. any, anything really. So. And then I've been contacting the photographers. So I've had some such good photographers just send me like high resolution images so that I could mm. use them to paint from. And yeah, I'm literally building up. And and it's it's strange because some of them, I one of my recent ones that I'm not going to show until the exhibition. Okay. I've not actually started it yet yeah. either. <laughs> but um, I was going to do for Gorillas and Mist. Awesome. I absolutely love animals. I'm the biggest animal lover ever and mm. never drew animals before. Really? So for I got a friend who's really quirky looking and I bought I thought, oh let's just try it, let's do Doctor Doolittle. Mm. And um, so I done that with elephants, giraffes, everything all round him. Mm. And it it worked. Mm. So so I'm adding a lot of like animals now. So so yeah, one I was gonna do for Gorillas in the Mess. Turns out it's gonna be King Kong now because okay. I couldn't find enough gorilla <laughs> images to sort of put around to make it a good painting. So yeah. yeah, but the image I've got for that is just superb. I mm. can't wait to do that. Yeah, it sounds like a fantastic series you're working on. So where's the exhibition gonna be? What's the plan for your first solo show? So the plan, mm -hmm. hopefully, <laughs> is gonna be for around the beginning of July. Nice. Next year in Centre Space in Bristol. Mm, it's an incredible space. That it is a space. really good area, and I, th I think for my work, it's not too big a, a place. Mm. Um, all of my paintings, I've done the same size, but mm. they are quite big. Yeah. And um, I'm having them all framed with the same frame because oh, nice. I just want want to walk in so that you know I, I just. I'm very finicky, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but you I can just be, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it more for me than yeah. anything else. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, I'm so excited about it because I want to be an artist more than anything mm. in the world. Mm. It's, I should have done it when I was younger, but never too late. It's never too late never to be too. an artist. So, no, that's great. I think basically covered everything we need. It sounds like you're working on an amazing series. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to your first solo show. That's going to be incredible to see your work, especially all consistently framed all together. Excellent. So we'll make sure come. I will be there. Don't you know. I look forward to it. But no, I think, thank you ever so much for coming on and having a chat with us, David. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.